Hello guys and welcome back to the Clan Wars Invitational Tournament between RB against Camille on the map Hots of Ice and Dwarves against Isengard in the best of three. Fairy versus May is gonna be happening this evening. Beautiful. Ahoy! <laughs> Persona, welcome to the stream. Talos, welcome to the stream. Excelsior, my dude, welcome. Alright, Dwarves against Isengard. Yellow against Blue. On the left side we have the Blue Isengard player Camille. And his opponent on the right side is the yellow dwarf player Erby. Erby was the finalist in the World Championship 2019. And we're gonna have the World Championship 2020 pretty soon. And let's see if he's gonna make it to the finals once again. Two mineshafts coming up for the dwarf player on the right side. And on the left side we have two furnaces for the Isengard player. Rylinko was picked. And Isengard didn't pick just yet. So he can also go for the war chant or for the creebane. Let's see what's gonna be his choice. All of Warriors is coming up, so nothing too crazy, nothing too spicy. Pretty normal start from both the players. And the work Pits, never mind, he's gonna go for the work Pit. With that being said, I'm assuming he's gonna go for the Creebane. Because if you see someone starting with the work Pits, he most likely gonna choose the Creebane. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because work Packs, but also work Riders, they have like a War Chant built in their kit. So they have a whole ability which is replacing the War Chant. And it can't stack with the war chant, guys. Some educational stream here, by the way. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's see. I mean, yeah, we have three mineshafts now on the field for the dwarf player. He's gonna go for the guardians of the galaxy. A really forwards furnace. Yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe he's pretty sure that Irby is gonna move through the sides and not through the middle. Yeah, he's indeed sending his builder to the bottom left side. Um, and the builder is just expanding around this area. So it's kind of mind games, I'm assuming. He's gonna go for the Uruk Pits now. The first, the very first work pack is gonna be joining the battlefield. Uh, and Isengard still didn't pick anything just yet. Uh, it will be sweetie short game. <laughs> Why are you saying that, dude? <laughs> Everything is possible in this game, trust me. Alright, Guardians are joining the fight pretty soon. He has already one battalion inside the mineshaft, by the way. It looks like he's gonna go for a push with two battalions of guardians. But the thing is that the work packs are gonna be good against the squad against those guardians if they if he has the creebane. They are using already the whole ability to take down the mineshaft before it's coming up. Will this be possible? That's the question. It's gonna be low, I think. But I think he's gonna manage to get those guardians on the field. Just in time demolishing that. But Workpacks were able to get the experience. Rylinko was used. The builder has to be careful. He's taking a bit of damage here. But Workpacks, they can't handle those buffed Guardians. And Isengard still didn't choose his power point ability from the spellbook. Another one is joining the fight. I think Rebin is the way to go. At this point, you need to debuff those units in order to take them down. This is my guess. And Crossbowmen are joining the fight as well. He's trying to sneak down the builder. And Builder is taking way too much damage, he needs to be careful. And that's a smart move here from Camille. Why? Because he doesn't want the Builder to build another mineshaft around this area. To bring more reinforcements on the field. Uh, on the bright side, he's taking down those Guardians without taking any kind of damage. That's really good, I like it. This furnace is pretty much untouched. And there is another furnace coming up around this area. And it looks like Irby is leading to the Troll Creep at the top right side of the map, Forts of Eisen. He was able to bring up another mineshaft regardless. Now we're gonna get some pikemen on the field. More pikemen, I'm assuming, to deal with the work packs. But there are some crossbowmen on the other side as well. Which is gonna make it harder now for Irby. And it looks like he's just gonna give up this mineshaft. Because he knows I can deal the damage I'm looking for. My rallying call is on cooldown. And those crossbowmen, they will be hard to deal with. The builder here from Isengard player Camille has to be careful, by the way. He's running straight into the pikemen. They're gonna pretty much one-shot him if he doesn't pay attention. And the creep will be secured by Irby in the game number one. Alright. Uh, PowerPoint wise, Irby was able to collect two power points after killing some of those work packs and taking down the troll creep. 400 command points are available for Irby. On the other side, the same amount of command points are available for Camille. He has around one power point collected only because he wasn't able to creep just yet. But he's gonna creep the work layer at the left side of the river. Uh, and the first tower of the game is coming up for Irby already, to protect this pathway. Um, I like the way that Camille is denying those mineshafts. And there are no mineshafts, howsoever, close to the side of Isengard player Camille just yet. As he's upgrading the work pits to level 2. 
creep will be secured now. We have some Urukai, Pikeman, and Crossbowman here. And still only the Hall of Warriors, so nothing like Forgeworks or something like this for RB just yet. This one is just gonna go down for sure. Uh, pretty slow creeping here from Isengard, not gonna lie. Ectelion, welcome to the stream. Right, Isengard player was able to creep. We have still many, many creeps left, and the mineshaft is coming up around this area at the bottom left side. It looks like you want to pressure, but the pikeman, they might be able to see that. Let's see. He's gonna be able to see that. And yeah, if he's, you know, if he can take down those mineshafts, he will be in a much better situation. Against the dwarves, you need to be kind of careful early on to not lose too many furnaces. And if you can do that, I think Isengard has a great scaling, especially economically-wise, economically, economically wise, you know. He's getting a lot of cash, the Isengard faction, and that's gonna be a huge push, by the way. This is gonna hurt him big time. Yes, War Chance pick, guys. No Creebine is ready. The Warg Riders are not gonna be that effective as he has two Pikeman units around this area. And his Rallying Call is gonna be available. I think this is gonna hurt him big time. We have also King Brent now on the field. To deal with the push from Isengard player Camille. He was trying to, you know, take down the builder. But Erby is paying attention. Rallying Call was used and that's gonna be massive. Splitting, that's smart. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. And yeah, he can't really face that. I mean, even if he uses Warchan on those units, he's just getting outnumbered here, big time, you know? But Lourdes is joining the fight. He's using Warchan regardless. Didn't wait for the second crossbowman coming out of the Uruk pit. Should be easily able to take down the work pit, even the Uruk pit afterwards. You know, he has the time and the units to do that. We know the Guardians are hitting like a truck on those structures. Um, yeah, he's also taking down the enemy units at the same time, so it lo it, it's not like he's only focusing on the structures, which is smart. He knows that he can do both at the same time. The Uruk pit is down, that means no more infantry reinforcements can be joining the battlefield from Isengard player Camille. King Brent in the meantime doing a great job defending. Isengard is forced to retreat. The level 2 furnace is gonna be the target, but War Riders are getting a great trample, but more reinforcements are coming. Try to take down the pikemen so the war riders can do some work. Lourdes was able to hit level 2. Carnage is gonna be unlocked and immediately used. Lourdes is one-shotting those units, but it looks like the level 2 furnace is gonna be taken down anyway. Unfortunately for the Isengard player Camille. There was a great push. I mean, he has now 9 power points collected. 600 command points, by the way, guys. King Brand is all about to hit level 3. His slam shot is available. On the other side, 375 command points only for the Isengard player Camille. He has around only 5 power points collected. So massive lead. Oh, that was a beautiful slam shot here. Massive lead for the dwarf player Erby in terms of command points, but also in terms of power points. Erby is in form, guys. Watch out for this guy. Watch out. Isengard has to rebuild, but Camille is gonna just call it GG. As there is obviously no way of coming back from this situation anymore. And the very first game will be won by Erby. The second game is all about to begin, guys. The score is 1-0 for Erby. The second game will be played on the map Westfold. And it's gonna be Elves by Camille against Dwarves by Erby. Let's get it started. If he will lose, he's French. But if he will win, he's Russian. No problem. <laughs> fair enough, dude. Fair enough. Starting the game. Um, Westfold. I don't know why Camille end up, you know, choosing the map Westfold. To be honest, Erin Lair, Sakura Forest, and Jungles of Farharat were banned from the map pool, from the players, so... But I don't know, still, if Westworld is a great pick against such a mobile faction like Dwarves. On the left side, we have the yellow Dwarf player, Erby. And on the right side, we have the blue Elven player, Camille. We don't know where this guy is from, so this is his flag, by the way. I thought he's French at the beginning, then people told me he's not French, he's also not Russian. So he's like a... Like a like an enigma, you know, like a like a legend. No one knows, no one knows, guys. Bad map choice, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I I, I one hundred percent agree with you, Mephis. This is uh, I think this map is gonna favor those mobile factions like dwarves and goblins, you know. Uh, elves are pretty good on small maps against dwarves because elves are looking for those all-out fights with the archer advantage they have. 
But those maps, you know, in which middle is kind of protected by the troll there, and the sides are wide, wide open, so many, many spots that Dwarf player can, you know, use those mineshafts for, are favoring those mobile factions of Rise of the Witch King. Right, two, three Malon trees up on the fields and the barracks as well. He's gonna go for the Lorian Warriors first. On the other side, Guardian start from the Dwarf player Erby after two mineshafts. And the thing is, you can't even punish the Dwarf players and Goblin players that much by pushing forwards because, let's be honest, they don't have that many mineshafts or tunnels around this area. They are expanding around the map much more often, right? So you can't just go push and hope that you will be able to take down several structures. I mean, it's gonna be always great if you take down this mineshaft right there, close to the Hall of Warriors. But they will have much, you know, much more mineshafts outside of their base, if this makes sense, guys. And that's why you need to scout all the time. And he was already able to bring those Guardians close to the Elven player. I think in a 1v1 situation, they should be able to win against those Lorian Warriors. Both players starting with the Rallying Call, and it looks like he's gonna position his, you know, swords right in front of the Malon tree. To potentially be able to protect it but defense is not always gonna be you know the key to victory you need to also try to put some pressure and take down this mineshaft as fast as possible the rallying call was used from both the players but the fortress is helping lorian warriors with the help of the fortress and now with the help of the lorian arches in the back should be able to defend that quite nicely that's a nice defense i like it i like the way he's microing those units by the way Beating them into the range, that's gonna mean he's not gonna lose many Lorian um, Swordmen. And will he be able to defend this attack as well? Oh, you don't want to be in melee range against them? Very nice micro here from Camille, I like it. At the same time, um, Irby is expanding, he's going for the pikemen. He can go now for the creep here, for the war creep. Nice, I like the, I like the micro here from Camille, not gonna lie. He's putting in some nice work with those archers. Oh, Eternals, you know, thank you, Eternal, for eight months, man. That's crazy. The underscore Eternal just resubscribed for eight months. Ahoy, I will follow you, my brother, my captain, my king, less than three. I will follow you, my brother, my captain, my king. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, Eternal. I hope you know that I really appreciate you. Alright, in the meantime, like predicted, Irby is creeping the war player around the signal fire and he's going for the forge works at the pretty much at pretty much the same time. That means we're gonna get some battle wagon action going on. As the second barracks is coming up for the Elven player, Camille. Um so far he was doing a great job defending. Haldir is gonna be helpful as well, especially against the battle wagons. That's actually a great move here from him. I really like this move a lot. So whenever you see the battle wagon, just right click on him with Haldir. That's gonna force him, if nothing else, to go back. And Elven player is moving to the troll creep in the middle of the map, which is smart. You need to have a clean middle, I think. And what you can always do with the elves is you can go for a camp mode, right? I look, for example, you make a offensive statue around this area, ideally right in front of the Hall of Warriors, and then you can deal. You can be super annoying to deal with. But at any point, you should never leave your side of the map open for a potential attack from the dwarf player we have seen already in the last game if you give too much time for the dwarves they're gonna go for a big push however i think the album units they're gonna have easier time defending than the Eisen than the urukai from isengard because now they will have also more damage here and the dwarves they can't negate the leadership you know it's really important Alright, um, against Battle Wagons, I think he's gonna go for the Banner Carry upgrade on them, if I'm not mistaken, for the double buff. But the Elves can remember, they can always go for the Enshrouding Mist, if they want to. Okay, it looks like he's gonna go for the attack here, but Elven player was able to see that coming. Yes, a lot of archers on the field. Haldir is also here. Uh, but you don't wanna fight here, there is no reason of you fighting here, just fight around this area. And try to keep those three, and those three are the starting Malon trees from the Elven player Camille, alive. That should be the goal. You don't need to deal too much counter damage. Or, you know, you don't need to do many or many counter attacks, in my opinion, with elves against dwarves. What you can always do is defend yourself. Build yourself a massive unit advantage with the defense. Oh, he doesn't have pikemen around. Oh, oh. He's microing though. Pikemen. 
Battle Wagon might do a mistake. Rallying Kovas used double buff. Action is going on. Oh, Battle Wagon is running right into the pike, man. Oh, no. That means the double buff is gone, but Elven player has still the double buff. Not anymore, though. The statue has been taken down within seconds, but there are too many units, too many archers to deal with for the Dwarf player. Can he get into the backline? That's the question. Hydir is also putting in some nice work, but the Malone tree will be taken down first. I mean, he was able to take down the statue and the Malone tree, but he's gonna lose all those units. He's gonna level up this Hydir for free, and he lost the battle wagon without being able to do anything, man. That's crazy. Oh, no. And Haldir is leveling up like crazy, guys. He's gonna hit level 5 pretty soon, and that means leadership is gonna be unlocked regardless. The battle wagon was kinda questionable from Erby, not gonna lie. And we might see a game number 3, guys, after that. Let's see. Oh, never mind. He's gonna lose another Malon tree here, unfortunately. Even in a bad situation, Erby knows how to make the best of it. That's why I like his playstyle a lot. He's putting pressure all the time. But if we take a look into the minimap, guys, look at this. Look how many Malon trees we have around this area. Alvin player was already able to creep this work layer. He's now going for the second work layer. He's moving now to the bottom left side. And he, on the bright side, he was also able to level up his Haldir. Haldir is all about to hit level 4, guys. That's really important. Once he has the leadership unlocked, it's going to be way harder to deal the damage that war player is looking for. And also, when Haldir is highly leveled, he's gonna have more DPS, right? With that, you can also just, you know, take down the battle wagon really fast, you know? Ofo sucks, yeah, but everyone, uh, you know, I think I know what you mean. If you need to micro those really heavy micro-based units like battle wagons, of course, being on host is gonna be much easier to do that. But you are not off host because your opponent is not being on host, right? So it's like a neutral host, which is kind of balanced for everyone, in my opinion. Okay, Haldir is all about to hit level 4. Um, both barracks are still only level 1, so we're not gonna get any Mirk boots just yet. King Brand is joining the fight though. King Brand is gonna be useful, I think, against the massive archers with the slam shot once he's level 2. Battle Wagon is here. He was using the oil barrels on those units. They are taking damage over time. And he has the banner carry upgrade on them. That means those nervy allied units will be dealing more damage and will be having more armor around this battle wagon. Um, another mineshaft is coming up. If we take a look into the command points and power points, Elvin player Camille has 585 command points collected, chat. 10 power points afterwards, after rallying call. 8 power points for Erby and 550 command points available. So, in terms of command points, it's quite even, and Elven player has not a big advantage in terms of power points, but two power points are also a decent amount, you know. Uh, he can now go for the mist if he wants to, which could be potentially the way to go. Haldir is level 4 now, really close to level 5, and Elven, you know, units are getting invisible around the trees, as you know. This battle wagon can't go for a trample, because those, battle uh, those uh, pikemen in the front are unseen. If you are not very close and mist will be used here there we go that means the leadership from the battle wagon will get negated and we have glorfindel on the field ladies and gentlemen to deal with those battle wagons to deal with those guardians it looks like the dwarf player is taking the fight regardless which might be a mistake i did is gonna hit level 5 pretty soon that means leadership will be unlocked and king brian has to disengage but he's going for a trample can he do it um, he's gonna get damage, and the mineshaft has been taken down. There is no way of escaping. I mean, he's gonna get away potentially, but he's gonna be very low, and will be might be forced to make uh, to use heal. But Glorfindel is like, you are not going anywhere, my dudes. You are not going anywhere, and will be taking down the battle wagon. There we go. One more hit needed. Bam. He's almost level four, by the way, guys. Blade of Purity is unlocked. King Brand on the other side is taking way too much damage against those pikemen, and Elven player is able to push Erby back. And remember, if, you know, Camille wins that game, Erby gets to choose the faction, while Camille has to pick elves again. And Erby can also choose the map he wants to play on, you know, afterwards. Okay, more battle wagons are coming. So far, he lost two battle wagons, guys, without being able to do much. And this is, this hurts, you know, this hurts big time. They cost 500 each, and that without the upgrade. And you need to also invest money for the upgrade afterwards, you know. And Glorfindel held it in the back, really close to level 5, really close for that leadership. And that might be the final push. He has some Guardians inside the mineshaft, but they can't really come out here. Because we know this Glorfindel is dealing a lot of splash damage. 
if you come come out in a situation like this, he's gonna auto attack once, and he might be able to kill like 15 units at once, you know. Especially with the blade of purity, also King Brent has to be careful. All right, we got a series here, boys. We got a series, and we might see a game number three. If nothing cr crazy is gonna happen, if we don't see any shenanigans happening in this game anymore, there is a high chance that we're gonna go into the tiebreaker game in the best of three, to game number three. The mineshaft is gonna be taken down. Very well done here from uh, the Alvin player. And I think all that builds up because of the great early start he had. He was able to defend himself quite nicely. Remember what happened at the beginning of the game, guys, right? He was able to deal with the Guardians, even though they used the Rallying Goal. He was positioning himself. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I mean, we talked about shenanigans. We talked about shenanigans, guys, and that's one of these. One of these shenanigans is happening right now. They have Siege Hammers purchased. Look, this damage and the Fortress is goners, guys. Okay. Okay. What is happening here? That's crazy. <laughs> what did you guys see that? That was a Fortress two seconds ago with 100% health. It's gone now. It's not existing anymore, guys, okay? The Undermine has been taken down, and that's a really sneaky attack here from Irby, and I love to see that. Very well done here from Irby, our Slovenian player of Rise of the Witch King, man. But can this be enough? Can this be enough? Or can the Alvin player potentially be able to win even without the Fortress? But remember, if you don't have a Fortress upon the field, you can't make use of your power points anymore. It means Rallying Cold, but also Mist, and also the 11 power points he collected afterwards can't be used. And he is far away to have enough resources to rebuild the fortress. I think if Irby can survive the, le the next three minutes, he has the way, he has the chance to win this game, because we know power points are much more impactful in the mid to late game. But I don't see that. I, that was a really, that was a great move, and I really appreciate those moves. But I don't think this is gonna be enough to win the game. Camille has still the upper hand, guys. But Hydeir is taking way too much damage here, man. And I don't see where King Brent is. I think King Brent has been taken down before. Uh, he's probably dead, yeah. And Glorfindel is all about to hit level 4. He has Blade of Purity. He has enough... You know, he doesn't have enough pikemen to kill the fortress. Re remember, Rebuild was used before on this mineshaft. He has not many units left anymore. He needs to, you know, make another builder around this area. We have only uh, 325 command points for Irby. And we have on the other side... 630 command points and he has around 2500 resources collected already so it's gonna be a matter of time and if this game goes like five minutes longer he will have more than enough resources to rebuild his fortress oh my goodness man this uh, tunnel is gonna be taken down and there are not many mine shafts left anymore from rb he has not enough money to make anything just yet he needs to just you know he's trying to get some more money by building more mine shafts you know rb likes to fight until the end it likes to do that but the end is close my friends the end is close there is a huge army here in the back and all he needs to do now and look at this king <laughs> look how is running against those guardians from those guardians i mean um yeah the thing is that this army is this army gonna be enough to take down the fortress that's the question because this is a heavily archer based army right there oh slam shot in your face King Brand is like showing Haldir who is the real archer in this game, boys. But he needs to now run because Glorfindel is all about to take revenge. Beautiful. Uh, he can take down the fortress. That is no way. With that army. I mean, Glorfindel is gonna be very effective against the fortress with the Blade of Purity, but I don't think he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be able to take it down alone. Once the Blade of Purity runs off, which is gonna be happening very soon, the damage, damage output is gonna be limited. I'm wondering what's gonna actually happen if you don't have any mine shafts anymore, and if you, you know, if you have units inside the mine shaft but you don't have mine shafts anymore, are they just gonna come out from the last one? There's also mid boots on the field, by the way. Rallying call was used on those guardians. Um, the Alvin player is kind of struggling to finish off the game, to execute, and to go for the next. King Brand is leveling up, and look at this, guys! Only King Brand and guardians are able to force the Alvin player back, at least for now. I mean, if Irby comes back to this... Guys, okay, we need to make a deal. Chat, chat, listen to me. If Irby manages to come back and win this game, he 
100% deserves the expert badge on GameReplays.org, okay? He deserves it. Like a double badge, if not only one. Alright. Uh, Choi Tuk Ok. Yok, thank you so much for the follow, man. I really appreciate it. You have a really hard name for me to pronounce. If if Erby comes back, Shanks give us away to 20. Yeah, but look, I need to save money for World Championship, you know? <laughs> I would I would do that, but I don't I, I need to save money, guys. Come on. Ants and the game. Yeah, exactly. I mean he just needs to go for ants. Uh, but it looks like he's just gonna be able to re rebuild the fortress, which is not necessary, by the way, in my opinion. You don't need that. Could have, you know, he could have want, he could have go for a uh, end mood and go f to finish the game faster, in my opinion. But we take those, we take those guys. But this is a guy who's always saying, "Is GG my bro?" This is GG my bro. Yes. Eagle me, yeah. Eagles can also do that. I mean, he has 17 power points collected, but the problem is he can use them before the fortress is up. But it's gonna be up very soon, so. King Brand is level 5. Build ants, yeah. Ants are the way to go. Or make some Lorian Swordmen, or more Pikemen, to have, you know, have at least some melee units to right click on the fortress. By Tranduil. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know? Okay. All right. I mean, this is like a cat and mouse game, like Tom and Jerry. You know what I'm saying? This is not. I don't know what's happening here in the last three minutes. This guy, this game was really high quality until the last five minutes happening. This is crazy. You know, this is like now we are watching how to not play the game tutorial. You know what I'm saying? He's making more milkwoods. There is no reason for you to do that. There is no army to take down. You know. Okay, eagles are coming finally from the power points as the fortress is up on the field. And that should be more than enough to take down and undermine on your face. This was funny what happened to Glorfindel right there. Um, if this if this dude, uh, uh, King Brand, would be level 7 right there, he could have, you know, one-shotted one of those eagles pro probably with the Beast Slayer arrow. That deals massive damage to flyers, by the way. Rebuild was used. And can he actually defend? That's the question. I mean, the fortress is still quite healthy. Um, King King Brand is dealing a lot of damage, but he's also getting damage here. Heal was used. It looks like he's winning that fight, and it looks like he will be able to de defend himself at least for now. I would like to see a Beast Slayer arrow against this Eagle, but it's not gonna be up by then. He's not gonna be level seven, and Irby is in the game, guys. And that means <laughs> Camille doesn't. Camille refuses to go for ants, but it looks like to end the game he need to go for ants, guys. There is no other way to win that game unless you make like Lorian warriors on pikemen and you know but he keeps making those uh, midwood archers they are really strong don't get me wrong but the problem is they are not dealing any damage to structures and especially not to the fortress and you know Irvi is work you know i can see that happening guys look trust me i can see that happening i can see camille getting super tilted and he rage quits the game everything is gonna be possible in this game Irvi. Who literally was sitting on 200 command points only is now 475 he managed to you know more than double that amount i don't still think that he has a chance to win this game but if this continues five more minutes maybe maybe Irby power points yeah Irby power points are here so we have five and a half power points collected after rallying call heal rebuild and the undermine obviously from killing the special summoned eagles you are not getting any power points or experience on the bright side he has a really strong king brent on the field using slam shots here bam beautiful and there we go finally the end mode is coming for the alvin player and that should be more than enough to finish the game but holy moly guys there was a suffer game right there incredible moves all the time early game was really crazy very quality gameplay at the beginning of the game and then the play from Irby, you know with the siege hammers to go for the undermine play and take down the fortress was super entertaining but afterwards, what we have seen was the definition of absolute fiesta, by the way. This is not how you want to play Rise of the Witch King, guys. Evolution is my dude. Welcome. How are you, how are you doing today? End mood is coming up. Finally. And he's gonna, this is going to take a while. I think this is just a matter of time at this point. 
I don't see him winning. But I would like to see, guys, um, look at this. Extra damage to flying enemies and savage damage to monsters. The, f the question is, are ants monsters? If yes, I'm expecting... i never seen this before. Oh, but he's gonna die anyway, so we're not gonna see that. <laughs> but I would like to see, you know, King Brand using the Beast Slayer arrow on this ant. And I would really... I'm really curious about how much damage he would be able to deal, you know? He one-shots ants? Hmm, I don't know, that's why I was, was curious. And <laughs> look at the Alvin player, he's going for the Nolder Warriors even, from the level 3. I think Camille has just, you know, I think Camille is just trying to have fun here, guys. He's like, okay, I got this, you know, game in my bag, in the bag, you know, there is no way I can lose that, so let me have some fun. Let me kill the confidence from RB, so I have a stronger standing in the game number 3. Maybe that's the plan from Camille, we don't know. But we know we have now Gloin joining the fight. And I can actually see another play coming here to the fortress, that might be the way to go. Imagine Erby being able to take down the fortress from the Elven player twice. That would be the dream, guys. Glenn is quite tanky, but he can't tank this, I don't think so. He has leadership here in the back, Mirk Woods here. And they are dealing a lot of damages, you know. And if this is not gonna be enough, we have also Nolder Warriors here now, as the first end is finally, finally joining the battlefield. Right. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a matter of time. I don't see him defending that one. He has not enough units. He has a lot of units inside, though. He has. I see four guardians and the Gloin. Is he gonna engage on that? Is he gonna try to defend himself? The statue on the back is, by the way, doesn't do anything for you. It's gonna just give you fear resistance because the leadership doesn't stack from Haldir and the statue. But it looks like the Dwarf player is going for the final, one last hurrah, you know, one last time. And he do it, Miss will be used. We have Noldurus in the back as well. Gloin has been taken down by the way by Glorfindel guys, we didn't see that, it was off screen, my bad. DJP, welcome to the stream. Alright, it looks like he's winning that fight by the way guys, that's crazy right? That's crazy. That's crazy. He's winning that fight, man. <laughs> but the Nolders in the back, though. The Nolders in the back, though. They are hitting so hard, guys. That's crazy. How they are hitting, guys? You know, you know, you know the you know the word for that. How they are hitting, like guys, those Nolders. <laughs> this is how you wanna use the end, yeah. Use end to defeat the guardians, you know. What we got here so early on, we have now, Yoda, welcome to the stream by the way. We have the Clam Wars, we had the Clam Wars month going on for the Rise of the Witch King 2.02. And the best 8 players were able to get qualified to the tournament, which is by the way being hosted from Black Knight. That's a cash prize tournament, in total of $350, I know, poke champ guys. And this is a double elimination, and this is gonna be one of those games between Erby against Camille. Erby is winning 1-0, but it looks like we're gonna have 1-1 after this game, as Camille is all about to win this game. And we're gonna jump right into the game number 3. Let's see. Like a truck, yes, exactly, Imperialist, you know what's up. You know what's up, dude. Eagles are gonna be ready soon again, I can't believe that this game actually, you know, kinda lasted that long. Irby kinda hold the game a lot. Everyone else, I think like 99% of all the other peoples would call it GG 15 minutes ago. But Irby is a warrior, guys. He's gonna use the Hobbit special summon on top of the Nolder Warriors. Just why not? Just why not? He's, you know, leaving the faith in the hands of the skilled Frodo who's just getting killed by the Mithlons sentry units. So even if, if not even Frodo can't save you, who else can do that? The fortress is quite slow, but he was able to take down the end once again. And I think we have seen the Beast Slay arrow. I think we that we missed that one. And that's gonna be you know that's gonna drag the game two minutes longer. We're gonna wait for the next end to join the battlefield first. The rebuild is on cooldown though, and it was a beautiful slam shot. And for me, the MVP of that game, even though Erby is losing, is King Brent. 
This guy was doing so much work. He's gonna be taken down here once again, by the way. Beast Slayer Arrow is on cooldown, and I, think, I don't think it's gonna be up before it's gonna get ready to be used. I mean, before the fortress is gonna go down. He's finally calling it GG well played, and that means we're gonna go into the tiebreaker game. Game number three, which is gonna decide who's gonna go at the upper side of the bracket and who's gonna go to the lower side of the bracket. However, in any case, every player has still the chance to win the tournament. The game number three, the tiebreaker game between Irvi and Camille is all about to begin. Isengard against elves on the map, Falls of Eisen. Good against evil, El Clasico boys. Beautiful. Let's get it started. The first game was Isengard against dwarves. Isengard was Camille and dwarves was um, Irvi. Irvi was able to win that game. The second game was Elves from Camille against Dwarves from Irby. Camille was able to win that. And now the last game is gonna be Isengard by Irby against Elves once again from Camille. On the map, Thoughts of Isen and Alp, uh, Alperen. Thank you so much for the follow, man. I really appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, buddy. Two furnaces for Irby. And we have our early barracks for the Elven player Camille on the other side. And Uruk Pit starts, so no work pit this time. Um, I don't know how this matchup is gonna be in the late game. I can't tell you guys. I didn't see that matchup that many times lately. Especially not in the very recent version of the patch 2.02. The version 8.3. Um, I think Isengard can actually do some work also in the late game. Especially if he gets Saruman and Lords highly leveled. They can do a lot, as you know. As we have already seen so many times from the replay cast we have, you know, made so far for Rise of the Witch King. And uh, Monkey! Monkey the World! Thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> what a nice name you have. Welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Three furnaces into the, Uruk uh, into the Urukai. First, another furnace is coming up for Irby. And Rambutan is following once again. What's happening? What, didn't you follow me before? And Timmy Saya, thank you so much for the follow as well, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Guys, we have so many followers. We have right now 1,344 followers. Can we make it 1,500 by the end of May? That's gonna be the main goal. Maybe we can do it, guys. What do you think? All right, uh, the work player is gonna be getting creeped from the Alvin player as he went for the early barracks, remember? Uh, Urukai are moving forward. But we will have Lorien Swordman and Lorien Pikeman or Mifflont ready to defend. Archer's gonna be next, obviously. Um, yeah. Yep, just checked and Irby couldn't pick Forts of Ice. Too late, I guess. I think too late as, as well. So, my bad. My bad, guys. But, um, unfortunately, Black Knight isn't in the chat right now, so he couldn't help us. Ahoy, ahoy, yes. Okay, pikemen are here. Another furnace is coming up. And Urukai were not able to deal the damage they were looking for. But at least he baited off the rallying call. And he has still the warchan ability available. That's a smart move here from Irby, I like it. Now he needs to just disengage, you know, wait for the duration of the rallying call to run off. And then he has the buff advantage, which is really good. But at the same time, um, one creep so far for elves, zero creeps for the Isengard player. That's gonna change soon as Irvi is moving to the troll creep at the top right side. Smart move to build a wall up here. That's really important, by the way, guys. Those little, you know, details they can actually, you know, change the fact he's gonna lose that anyway. But uh, he's at least delaying and he's gonna be able to take down those units. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, okay, okay. Smart move here once again from Irvi. Was able to save the furnace, man. That's crazy. He's gonna now capture this info himself. That means he's gonna be able to recruit some of those black orcs. That, that's actually great for Isengard if you think about it. Because Urukaya, they are really expensive, as you know, guys. They cost 400 each. This one is gonna go down for sure. And black orcs on the other side, they cost only 250 each. So they are also very strong in a 1v1. I think they could even beat the Lorian warriors. And they have, uh, you know, they are cheaper than Urukai, so you can maybe recruit them all the time. 
instead of the Urukai, so you will have similar powerful units on the field for less price. Uh, 350 command points for the Alvin player Camille. He has now some of those Revendal Lancers coming from the stable. Two power points collected after rallying cold. And 400 command points for Erby. Warchant and two and a half power points. Uh, he's gonna get around three now after creeping the Vorklea around this right side of the river. Um, getting more pikemen. Is he going for the Black Orcs? Yes, he does. That's really good. I like it. Oh, it's Forts of Eisen. Yeah, beautiful map, right? <laughs> And yeah, this is already a camp mode here from the Alvin player. We have a statue coming up, as you can see. Barracks, stables. I don't know what he's doing with those lancers. Not very, not being very interactive right now. What I see all the time is that they use, you know, the lancers as one group of units. And they move with multiple lancers at once. Which is not the greatest call in my opinion. Maybe it's because I'm coming from Battle for Middle of 1 and giving me 1. You split your lancers. One left, one right, and then, you know, try to... Focus on multiple structures at once, but that's gonna be a great push. We have Sharko on the field, by the way, to deal with the Lancers. And that's the thing that I was talking about. Rallying Call is gonna be available soon, though. And he has a stage on the back. Double buff is gonna be a thing. Sharko is getting a great trample off on those Lorian Arches. That was a risky move. But this is gonna be a big push here from Irby. Yeah, this is gonna be a big push from Irby. And even though Camille was trying to get ready for that... That was nice from Camille right there, into the crossbow man in the back. Creebane will be used to negate the leadership, but there is not much to negate anymore. As there are barely any units around and alive from the Alvin player, Camille, right now. Charku was paying off. He's already level 3, by the way. One Lancer Battalion is gone entirely. There is only one or a half battalion left, in my opinion. This is not gonna do much anymore. And the Creebane again doing work, negating the leadership and debuffing the units afterwards as well. This Malon tree is gonna go down, and the thing is that Alvin player isn't being in a great situation anyway, so losing this Malon tree is not gonna help him to come back to the scheme. And during all this time, Isengard is obviously being able to expand at the same time. 500 command points now, he's getting massive amount of power points. The Rise of the Witch King, more like the Rise of Power Points, maybe. He lost all the Lancers now, no more horses on the field. That might be early GG in the game number 3. Ermi was already the number one, by the way. So he won the Clan Wars month. He's, you know, Camille is in the top eight, but Ermi was the number one. Um, yeah, of course, it's, you know, depends also on the player skill of being able to make it to the top eight, but also of the activity of the players. For example, Imperialist, Mr. Smog, Solas, they could have easily make it to the top eight, in my opinion, if they would just spam many, many games. This is kind of rewarding the active members of the community, which I really like a lot. Because those guys who are spending more time playing, they should also get the chance to participate in those kind of tournaments. I like it. Alright, he's gonna... Okay, okay, again. That was a funny way to call it GG. <laughs> and the games and the series of this best of three will be won by our young Erby from Slovenia. He's looking strong, he's looking in form. Everyone who's gonna face against him in this tournament has to watch out, has to be careful, has to be in form, has to perform quite nicely. And as always, guys, if you're watching right now on the Twitch, what I want you guys to do is click on that purple follow button. And if you are watching that over at YouTube, like this video and subscribe for more content like this.